Now it's time to put Faraday's law together with Lenz's law. And that's another awesome uh, thing here. So this is this one right here. It says that the induced EMF will act in such a way as to oppose the motion. What does that mean? This seems to be really weird, right? I love this. It's like, I'm not saying it's aliens, but it's aliens. It's like, no, there's not aliens going on, but it is a little bit weird seeming. So um, the induced EMF, remember from this equation uh, that it's, uh, this is uh, Faraday's law, right? That's this one here, that the induced EMF will be proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. Again, what that means, moving magnetic field lines, those are going to create this. Uh, and it's just a number of coils, so it just makes it bigger if you have more turns. Um, it's this negative, that's the important part right here, this negative, that's the part that opposes it. So what does that mean? It means that depending on the situation you are looking at, you need to think about what's going to happen. So that's why I've got uh, two examples here. So first one, in which way will the current flow in the wire at point one? So here, do you notice we don't have a battery or anything? This is just a, a passive sort of circuit, it's just a coil of wire around a piece of metal. And now we have a north and a south. This is a magnet coming towards it, in this case, you know, in that way, in uh, sort of that direction. So what's really going on here? Well, it's going to oppose the motion. And what I mean by that then is this. Because it wants to oppose the motion, it doesn't want a north coming towards it. So because of that, it's going to temporarily, only while this north is coming towards it, it's going to temporarily make a north here and a south here. It's going to become magnetized, but only temporarily and only while it's going towards it. So then you can use your hand rules to figure out which one we should do. Now keep in mind, this is a solenoid. So you should probably use hand rule number two. So here you're gonna have to use your, uh, remember it goes like this, right, like that. So that means your fingers are the current and your thumb is a direction of magnetic field. So it's a direction the north would point. So in this case right here then, you have to use your trusty right hand. In this case right here, you look, I'm gonna make my right hand, I'm gonna have my thumb point to the right. Why is that? Because if I put a north right here at the end of my thumb, wouldn't that make the magnetic field lines go away from that? Because that's a direction a north on a compass would point. So in this case right here, my thumb, that's gonna be north. That means, uh, so that means to your piece of paper, do that. Okay, so put your hand like this right here, you know, to a piece of paper, whatever you're writing on, or to the screen. Um, your thumb is that way, and then look carefully at what your fingers are doing. Your fingers curl in the direction of current. Can you see in this case, my fingers are curling sort of into, or sorry, out of the page, so to speak, and then this way, they're going like this. So look carefully on how to apply that to the screen here. So if you do that, does it make sense then that they're going, watch carefully, they're going like this, and the current's gonna go in that direction. Can you see that? It's gonna go out from behind this thing, and in front of you, then behind, and then in front of you. So if that makes any sense, that means it's gonna go that way. Does that make any sense? Behind in front, behind in front, therefore it's gonna go that way. This is gonna be the answer. The current's gonna go to the right in this case, because it's gonna go that way. What if then though, I reverse this? Let's just say it was the opposite situation. What if I drew it where all of a sudden now this north and the south was going away from it? What would happen then? Right, I've still got my coil of wire here. What would happen then? So this is a whole separate situation. The answer was current goes to the right in this case. What if I moved it away? Then you gotta think, ah, look, Lenz's law says it's gonna oppose the motion. It's gonna say, it's like it's saying, come back, I was just kidding, I don't want you to leave. So if a north is going away, it's gonna temporarily make a south here and a north here because it wants to oppose the north going away from it. See, in this case, it wanted to oppose the north coming towards it. We've got a north going away and it wants to make a south then because it wants to oppose the motion. Then you have to use your hand rule again. In this case right here though, my thumb would be to the left because that's the way of that one. So I put my thumb to the left, my fingers now are curling sort of like this way. So can you see my fingers have to curl from in front, then behind, then in front, then behind. So does that make any sense? In this case here, the current would be that way. Now, why is this important? This is only, uh, I don't know, like how we get almost all electricity in the world. That's only that important. So this is really huge. Think about this. This is how we actually generate electricity. Because what you have to do is, imagine uh, you have a wheel that's turning. There's lots of ways of turning a wheel. It could be hydroelectric, you have water passing through a, a pipe, that turns a you know, water wheel, attached to that wheel some magnets. It could be nuclear power, right? Where you actually have this nuclear energy being converted to thermal energy, which is being used to heat up water to make steam. The steam passes the little paddle wheel. That wheel has magnets. 
you know, wind energy, same thing, right? The wind hits the, um, the blades on the wind turbine. What does it do? It imparts a momentum that way. Newton's third law says it's going to move. That rotates a wheel. Guess what's attached to the wheel? A big surprise, magnets. That's why I say it's not aliens, <laughs> but it's aliens. No, it's actually magnets. You have to have moving magnets. Even on my crappy bike. I mean, on my own bike, this is what I have. I have a little, have a little um, light that's attached to the front fork of my bike. That thing has a little circuit in it and it just has a little light bulb. There's no battery. And what do I attach to my wheel? Magnets, because I'm the energy source. And as I bike, I've got little magnets going around and they basically pass around. And what really happens is this then, as a magnet is coming towards it. So just imagine then, I'm just going to try to pick up this one. Can I do that? Let's, see, let's just see if I can do that. Here we go. So I've got this thing. Imagine as it's coming towards it, it's going to make, you know, uh, so as a magnet, because remember, remember, the magnet's going to be going around in a wheel like this here, right? So as the magnet comes towards it, it's a wheel, right? So as it goes around like this, as it's coming towards, it'll do a situation like here where the current will be to the right. But as it goes away, you notice it's going to want to oppose the motion. So that's what it's going to do like this. So during this part, when it goes away, it'll make the current go to the left. And as it comes towards it again, the current's going to switch and go to the left, then to the right, then to the left, then to the right, then to the left, and to the right. So as you have moving wheels like this, you induce electricity, true, you induce an EMF, but the important thing is you induce it in such a way that it reverses direction because we're using moving magnets and the magnets come towards and away because they're on a wheel. Does this maybe explain to you why then we have what's called AC or alternating current? That's because when we have these wheels turning around and moving around, the current's always flipping direction because you have a magnet, a north coming towards it, then it does one thing. When the north goes away from it, it says, hey, come back, it does another thing. So the current's constantly flipping direction. That's what we call alternating current, AC. And this is the process, this is why we get AC as our electricity because that's how we generate it for the most part other than batteries and a few other exceptions like solar power, uh, we pretty much always get AC, alternating current. Is that amazing? So this explains like everything. Now, um, I've got another example for you. You have a metal rod and it's sitting on some wires. So like this, this is the metal wall rod right here and it's free to move around. So this metal rod right here can slide and it's sliding to the left. See that I've drawn a little velocity vector here or velocity arrow. We've got the magnetic field B is directed into the page. That means they're going, uh, in this case, that way into the page. In which way will the induced current flow? And this sounds really weird, but again, you want to oppose the motion of this rod going left. Now we can't use hand rule number two like we did before with the solenoid. There's no solenoid here. I want to oppose the motion of something moving to the left. And I've got a magnetic field. I've got a velocity and I need a current. This is hand rule number three. So I'm going to show you the Star Wars way. Okay, so you're going to get out your hands like this and say, hi, which hand rule do I need? Well, I've got a current, so I've got to use the right hand rule. It's not a left hand rule, a right hand rule. Now, watch very carefully. We want to oppose the motion of this rod moving left. So that means I can take my hand. I want to make my hand, my palm, to the right. Why does my palm have to be right? To oppose the motion. This is the key thing. So because the rod wants to move to the left, my palm, which is the force, must be to the right. Now, of course, I point my fingertips. Let's see, those go uh, with the direction of the magnetic field line. So in this case here, they're gonna go into the page. Does that make any sense like this? So my palm is to the right. My fingertips are inside, like going into the page. And my thumb points in the direction of either the current or the velocity. In this case right here, it's a current because it's a wire. So in this case here, this is the direction of the current goes down. Did that make sense? That's why the current then will be, the, whoa, what have I done here? I don't want to wreck that. The current then goes this way. That's it. So in other words, and of course, that's going to go then that way. It's going to have to go around in a circle. So it'll go this way. It's going to induce a current going that way. So in this case, in the rod, it's going to go down, but the rest of it's going to go kind of that way. So it's going to actually induce this current. And again, just to remind you, why is it? It's because the rod was sliding to the left and Lenz's law says you want to oppose the motion. And in this sense, the way to oppose a rod sliding left is to make a force going to the right. So that's why I take my trusty right hand and I had to force my palm, which is the force, to be right. 
and then my fingers end up being the magnetic field lines and my thumb is the current so that's why my thumb goes down that's why it's down here and because it's down here well that's the only way to complete the circuits to go around like that that's why it does that awesome huh